Hi, I'm James Catherall, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can use your hardware synths and other type of hardware audio gear inside of MainStage through the use of their external MIDI channel strips. Now, I would say this is somewhat of an advanced concept inside of MainStage, and you need a pretty good understanding of how audio works and how software audio works and all those kinds of things to really get a grasp of what's happening with the routing and how everything's connected. So if you are new to this type of stuff, you can definitely rewatch this video over and over again as I go through the steps. There is a fair amount of steps with this. So we'll go through everything piece by piece just to make sure it all gets connected and it's all easy to follow from beginning to end. For this video, I'm gonna be using the Motif Rack ES and the outputs of it are routed to my Focusrite 18i20. And my Motif is also connected to my Mac Studio via USB. And we'll go over why that's important later. So I wouldn't say that this is a definitive guide on how to set up external MIDI inside of MainStage. It will be highly dependent on what type of hardware gear you're using, but this will just sort of be a general walkthrough of how to set it up using the equipment that I have. And so you can figure out how to apply that to your own hardware gear that you're using. With that said, let's look inside of MainStage and see how we get this set up. Here's my concert. I already have everything set up and ready to go, but I'll walk through the steps of how I got to this place. I'm gonna push Control N to create a new channel strip and I'm looking at the external MIDI channel strips. And for now, you can define things here if you want, but I'm gonna cancel out of this and just show you on the channel strip itself. So if I click here, at the very top is the MIDI output. So this is where the MIDI information is being sent to that you're playing on your MIDI controller. At the top, I have my port one on the Yamaha Motif Rack ES, and that's there because I'm connected via USB to the Motif Rack. And then I wanna send it over channel one. So these are the 16 MIDI channels. I have it set to channel one because my MIDI controller that I'm using in front of me is sending over channel one. Next, right here in the input, I have it set as input seven and eight. So let's take a look at my Focusrite control software. So if you look right here, I have it plugged into channel seven and eight on my Focusrite 18i20. And if I play on it, you can see it's going through channel seven and eight but I have those pulled all the way down because if I had those pulled up on my audio interface, then it would just be going direct through and I would hear the main stage sounds and I would hear the motif sounds. So I wanna pull those down so that I'm not getting the direct sound, I'm only getting the affected sound through main stage. That's important because if I put any type of effects, like if I put an EQ on it and I did like a, a high cut, and I was playing, you wouldn't actually hear the high cut because you'd be getting the normal signal that's bypassing all the main stage stuff along with the main stage signal. So it might sound a little bit confusing, but hopefully it'll make more sense as we go through this. And then at the bottom of this channel strip is output one, two. And that's just my default output that I'm using from my audio interface to hear all of my sounds. So now I can play and see what it sounds like. So I'm just on the default piano sound right now. But this gives me the ability to use all of MainStage's effects on my Motif Rack. So if I go here in the audio effects, I can put an EQ on this, a high cut, do even more aggressive, and there's my EQ. And then I can also do MIDI effects on this as well. I could do a chord trigger, I'll do learn here, and then there we go. So we got like a minor chord going on. If I push that, we can see that the chord trigger is working inside of main stage to trigger the sounds on my Motif Rack ES. Now let's go over the other part of what makes this really cool. So you see, I have two patches here, my Motif Rack ES1, and then if I go to my Motif Rack ES2, and then I play sounds, you notice now it's a completely different sound. And all I did was change patches inside of MainStage. So let's take a closer look at how that's happening. Number one is this is where that USB connection once again becomes important from my Motif Rack to my Mac Studio. I also needed to go into my Motif Rack and I changed a setting so that it was receiving MIDI information from the USB rather than the five pin MIDI port that it has on the back. So once I've done that, let's go back to patch number one. I'm gonna click on this channel strip and I'm gonna go to MIDI output. So these are all the MIDI messages that can be outputted to your hardware device every time you make patch changes. So if you look over here, it says on patch change. And this is what's gonna happen every time you change to this patch. I have send program change and I have send bank select. 
So for right now, I have it set up as two different numbers. If you don't see two different numbers in your concert, you just need to push command comma to open up the preferences, go to MIDI, and then you wanna make sure bank select as individual MSB slash LSB. So that's gonna be important depending on the hardware. For my Motif Rack ES, it needs the MSB and LSB numbers to be able to send the correct program changes. And then next thing, so that I know what numbers to send, I had to go into the Motif Rack manual to find the right numbers. So here's that manual. This has the list of all of the different sounds and scroll down here. There's a whole bunch of different presets to be able to select from. And then it's telling me here at the top what numbers I need to send. MSB needs to be 63. LSB needs to be zero, and then program change needs to be one, and that's gonna send me to the full grand right there. So if I go back to main stage, I can see MSB is 63, LSB is zero, and then program change is one, so that got me to the piano. And if I go over here, now I'm on like a synth lead type of sound. If I go back, I need it to be on MSB 63 and LSB four, and then I sent it to number two, so that brought this space lead. If I go back, I can see, clicking on this channel strip, MIDI output, send program change two, MSB is 63, LSB is four. It's another sort of detailed step just to make sure everything gets sent correctly, but all of that stuff should be in the manuals of the hardware gear that you're using so that you can send these program changes through different MIDI devices. So I would say that's really one of the best parts of being able to use external MIDI inside of MainStage is the ability to change patches just through your MainStage patch changes and not having to worry about MainStage patch changes and hardware gear patch changes. If it's all connected correctly, it can just all come from one place and then it sends that out everywhere else it needs to go. That's the process for the Motif Rack. Whatever hardware gear you're using might be slightly different, but the general principles should be pretty similar. You wanna make sure the MIDI output is going to that hardware device so that every time you play on your MIDI controller, it's sending the MIDI data to the correct place, along with that MIDI channel. That's another important one. And then as far as the input, you need to make sure that the outputs of your hardware device is going to the right place on your audio interface so that way you can get the audio into main stage. And the last step of this is just making sure you're familiar with the manuals for your hardware gear. There should be a section in there that talks through how to route MIDI for instances like this inside of main stage. So let's talk through one more use case of the external MIDI channel strips. We went through one scenario with hardware gear, but you can also use third party software and if you route it correctly, you can use it through external MIDI channel strips and that'll allow you to save some CPU and some RAM usage in your concerts. So for this one, I'm gonna do it inside of contact and that's gonna allow me so I only need one instance of contact open and now all the MIDI is getting routed between the two programs. So let's talk about how this works. For the method that I'm gonna show you right now, you do also need one other piece of software outside of contact. You're gonna need something called loopback. This is a great piece of software that allows you to route audio to different places on your computer. So let's open that up and see what's going on. So right here, this is the loopback interface. I have the pass-through set up, and then I have a bunch of outputs. So to get more outputs on pass-through, you just need to add more output channels right here. So for now, I've added 16. In the manual for the loopback software, it says that you can add up to 64 if you want. So for now, I've just added 16. And we'll talk about how we're gonna use those in a little bit. Now, once we've done that, I'm gonna open up the preferences in main stage, go to audio, and make sure the input is set to loopback because that's where the audio is getting routed from. Now let's look at our channel strips. I already have them created here. So here's my contact sounds. My MIDI output, this time I'm using IAC buses. I won't do a deep dive on IAC buses in this video, but it is a stock thing that comes with all Mac and Apple computers. It's basically a virtual MIDI cable that allows two programs to communicate with each other and be connected. So if you want a little bit more information on IAC buses and how to set them up, you can check out the video in the description that I'm gonna provide the link for. But with that said, I'm gonna set this to IAC bus three that I've created. And then the only difference between these is gonna be the channels that they communicate over. So all of them are gonna be bus three, but I'm gonna utilize these program channels one through 16, and we'll see how that's set up in contact. And then the inputs are gonna change, and that's through loopback. So one of these is one, two, the other one is three, four. I have another one here that I set up as five, six. So that allows each of these to be separate and I can treat all of them separately because of that routing in loopback. 
So once again, we'll just take a quick look at that loopback setup. So here's all of my pass-throughs. So channel one and two is gonna be one instrument in contact. Three, four is gonna be another instrument. Five, six is gonna be another instrument. And then I can keep going all the way down for as many different instruments as I wanna have open. So now let's look inside of contact. So here I have the standalone version of Contact 7. This is not loaded up in main stage, this is loaded up on its own on my computer. So I have them all minimized just to make it easier for myself, but I will open this one up. I have the Gentleman Piano, and here's how it's all routed. First thing I'm gonna do is I go to the gear at the top, and I wanna make sure that my device right here is set to loopback audio, and I have that there. And then I just wanna make sure the sample rate is correct. I have it at 44.1 right now, so that's good. And then I'm gonna to go to MIDI, and then the only thing I want right here is inputs. I'm gonna to go to the bus that I have. So I have IAC bus three, and I want that to be port A. That's the only thing I'm gonna do right now inside of this menu. Everything else is gonna be off, and then I'm gonna close that. And now for each of these instruments that I have loaded, if I go up here at the top, I have this set to stereo one, which is channels one and two. And I can see that down here at the bottom. I can get to this menu by clicking up here at the top of this window. It's got this like three different sized boxes. And then I want outputs to be checked. And that's gonna show me my outputs down here. Once I've done that, I can go back up here to the top and this is the MIDI channel. So I have it port A and I have it set to channel one. Now we can minimize this and then we can go to the next instrument I have. Expand this. I have this one set to stereo two, which is channels three and four. And then the MIDI channel is still port A bus three, but now it's channel two. And I can minimize that. And then same thing down here, open up this last one. I have it set to stereo three, which is outputs five, six, and then port A channel three. Quite a few steps in there to get all this stuff set up. But once we have that done, it makes it way easier when I'm performing to make sure everything's gonna work correctly. So there's a few steps on the back end just to get all of this set up, but then once we've gone through all of those, it's rock solid and it works great every time and it saves you a lot of CPU power and a lot of RAM power. Because now, instead of having to load a bunch of separate instances of contact throughout my concert on all of my different patches, I can just open it once in standalone mode on my desktop and now I just use IAC buses and loopback to help route the audio and the MIDI information between the two programs. So this goes a long way. If you like using contact instruments inside of MainStage, contact can really use a lot of RAM depending on the libraries that you're using. So this helps a lot to make sure that you're not overloading your computer, but still allowing you to use all of those awesome contact libraries that you love. So now we can see how that works. If I play here, I have my piano plus my music box. Both of them are making sound there. And then if I go here, to my next patch, both of those are gone because they're not on this patch. Now I'm just gonna have this typewriter sound. So now it's just a typewriter. So now it gives me that same access. I can switch patches and have control over what sounds I'm making inside of MainStage. And then I have all of that open and loaded inside of Contact beforehand. And the thing that makes this easy, if I go back to Contact, is you can go up here to the little like floppy disk save icon Click on that and then you can save this as a multi inside of contact and then you give it a name and it makes it really easy to bring this back up later so you don't have to keep loading all these instruments and do all this routing. It's basically a one time process, save it and then you can just recall that save every time you want to use this for your performances. That's it for external MIDI channel strips inside of MainStage. There's quite a few steps to this. Like I said before, this is a bit more of an advanced concept inside of MainStage. You need a pretty good understanding of how routing works with software programs and how all these different things are gonna to talk to each other to really be able to grasp and understand how to connect all of this stuff. So hopefully this video can help with that setup process because I know it's not entirely intuitive to figure out. You gotta really know where all of these different things are to be able to make it work but hopefully it's helpful in getting you connected with your own hardware devices and allowing you to incorporate that in your main stage setups. That's it for this video. If it was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.